Hey everyone, Mr. Schachter here to talk about the definite integral, objectives of this video to experience the evolution of integration. First of all, what we're trying to do is find the area accumulated between the blue curve and the x-axis. And in order to do that right now, we're using rectangles, lots and lots of rectangles. And we're adding up all the areas of those rectangles. So considering the region from A to B, and uh, C is going to be an arbitrary x value here, and f of C sub whatever, sub 1, sub 2, uh, this is f of C sub 1 and f of C sub 2, that's going to be the corresponding y value. K is going to be right here where we start to get into positive area, uh, meaning it's above the x-axis, and we're going to go all the way until x sub n, which basically represents the very last partition. Um, and the goal here is that we add up all these rectangles, and we eventually get a number that's very, very close to the actual integral, which represents the area under the curve. And right now, we're going to use Riemann sums. That's what we were looking at in the previous videos. So a Riemann sum is basically a sum of all the area of the rectangles under the curve. This notation right here, this Greek letter sigma, is known as sigma sigma notation. And essentially what sigma notation is, is a sum of all the areas of all the rectangles. Now we're trying to do two things, essentially, to get closer and closer to the actual value of the area. The first of which is we're trying to make delta x infinitely small, essentially approaching zero. Now remember that delta x represented the space between each of the rectangles, the width, essentially, of each of the rectangles. But at the same time, we're trying to make the number of partitions n infinitely large. And basically, n represented all of the different number of rectangles. So the goal is to make lots and lots and lots of rectangles with basically infinitely small um, width. And ultimately, what that's going to do is give you a fluid area. Instead of a choppy, instead of lots of choppy rectangles added up all together, we're going to have a nice fluid area. So that's where we're trying to go. Which brings us to our first definition of the definite integral. Let f be a function defined on a closed interval a to b. For any partition p, meaning any chunk of that interval, let c sub k be our x values chosen arbitrarily between some interval. Then there exists an interval i such that, and we're going to do a couple of new vocab terms. First new vocab term is known as the norm of the partition. And it's notated, looks like a double absolute value bars with the letter p. That stands for the norm of the partition. The norm of the partition is essentially the space in between each rectangle. And as it says on the bottom of the text, we know that the, uh, the norm of the partition, aka the space, is always going to approach 0, as long as f is continuous on a to b. So if we go back up to our, uh, our sigma notation up here, norm of the partition, aka the space between each rectangle, is going to approach 0. Then we're going to sum, starting from value k equals 1, I'm going to use a highlighter, starting from value k equals 1, all the way up to n. So our, basically our partitions. And we're summing f of ck, which are basically all the function values for x values of c sub k. So basically just all of our y values. And of course, we're going to multiply by the height of each of the rectangles, which is delta x sub k, meaning all of the widths basically factored out and multiplied at the end, um, which you can pull that out of the summation if you choose. Um, and that basically is going to equal i. And what this fact states for us, <coughs> pardon me, what this fact states for us is that this region actually has some integral i. We say when something has an integral, it can be integrated. We call that integrable. That's our new vocab word on this slide is integrable. On a to b, and i is known as the definite integral of f over a to b. But this isn't the integration definition that we use in calculus today. This is the definition that they started with. We have to progress through the ages to figure out what happened to get to our normal definition. Uh, but first, a brief theorem, very important theorem, super big. Theorem number one of the section states, all continuous functions are integrable. That makes sense, right? Because we know if a derivative ha is continuous, right, if a function is differentiable, then we know the original is continuous. So this means if we start with a function that's continuous, that means we can go backwards and integrate it, right? Basically, this just is a fancy way of saying differentiability implies continuity. It's just we're using different terminology.
All right, let's move a step further. Let's actually define the integral i. Now what I want to do is actually just get our old definition of the integral that we just used a moment ago so we can compare and contrast, okay? So it says let f be continuous on a to b, and it's going to be partitioned into n subintervals of equal length where delta x is equal to b minus a over n. b minus a over n is just an algebraic calculation as to what the width would be. You're basically taking b minus a, which represents the total distance of the interval, and dividing by n, which represents the number of rectangles. So that's going to give you your delta x. Then the definite integral of a to b is given by the following. So the limit as n goes to infinity, which is basically the same thing as saying that the space goes to zero, we're now saying that the number of rectangles goes to infinity. It's kind of like the same thing if you think about it, right? You're making the space go away, and essentially what you're doing is you're making you know, an enormous number of rectangles, so, so much so that you cannot even see that there's any space between them anymore. Um, this next part seems pretty similar. It's the sum from k equals 1 to n of f of c sub k. And this time we're going to simply notate delta x is the same thing as our delta x sub k. Meaning this time we're going to basically arbitrarily choose the kth sub interval. Um, so we don't need to use the k notation any longer. But we're still not quite there yet. Uh, before we go any further though, let's kind of look at what this looks like pictorially. So here's a graph of what this is kind of representing. Now recall that n represents the number of rectangles, so we're going to make that go to infinity. Now these, uh, these c sub k values, these are all the x values of our, of our um, rectangles, right? So here's like one general one, c sub k, and then of course we're moving in a you know, larger direction and a smaller direction based on the, the x values. Uh, this represents the point c sub k comma f of c sub k, which is just the generic y value for our point c sub k. Um, this space also represents, this space right here, also represents that height, that f of c sub k value. So what essentially this integral is doing is it's summing an infinite number of these partitions. We're going to start from k equals 1, which is going to be this guy right here which is going to give us, if k equals 1, we're just going to call it x sub 0, which is the beginning number. And we're going to go all the way until n, which is when we reach the top. Uh, and we're going to add together all of our height values, and we're going to multiply by our width values. So what this formula is doing is exactly what was intended. It's taking an infinite number of rectangles, and we're multiplying the height of all the rectangles by the width of all the rectangles, and adding them all up all the way to infinity until we basically squeeze an infinite number of rectangles under this curve. So the final stretch. We're going to take our notation now and link it to the notation that we are familiar with today. So a couple of things. First of all, let's examine the delta x. Because the delta x is basically going to approach zero, we call that our differential dx. So the delta x turned into the dx, okay? Uh, the fact that we're summing from a to b is really kind of taken from the fact that we're summing from k equals 1 to n, uh, and we're going an infinite number of times. So instead of crowding together all of these massive massive rectangle, you know, I should say massive number of rectangles, um, what we're essentially going to do is get rid of that and think of it like a smooth selection. So instead of chunking it from k equals 1 to n, where n goes to infinity, we're simply going to consider it from a to b, our initial integral region uh, from a to b. Um, and the elongated s is the Roman letter that we're going to use for sum. So the elongated s is that integral symbol, uh, and that is going to stand for the sum. Uh, and so what this, uh, this notation is designed to do is to sum all of the f of x values, the function values, from a to b and multiply by our differential dx. So these formulas are kind of uh, doing the same thing, just with uh, our new notation. And this, of course, is the notation that we will use moving forward.